All right, here is Scenic Cruiser 858. Um, today is March 2nd. Uh, I'm going to be trying to uh, remove the engine out of the back of the bus there. Um, but uh, I just want to give you kind of a, an overview. This is a storage unit in Kankakee, Illinois, uh, of where it's stored. Um, I'll kind of show you what I've done here. Just the front of the bus. Uh, I have opened it up already. I've got my truck parked over here uh, with a bunch of tools in the back. Last night I was out here. Um, I actually brought uh, a trailer that I had, I've had i turned into a dolly. Um, here it is uh, on the camera here. You can actually see I've got a couple of casters there on it. Uh, we've got six of them. Uh, two in the back, two in the middle, and then two in the front. Um, I kind of took the original design of the dolly. Uh, kind of made it my own. I picked up this trailer on Craigslist for 125 bucks. Um, repacked the bearings. Got different wheels for it. The, the trailer, pretty much it. It was uh, about three feet longer. It was a 14 foot and then a by four foot for the deck. Um, it was worth it for me just for the axle. And then I'll go ahead and, and uh, deck this trailer over once I've I've gotten the engine um, out of the back of the bus. Um, I'll go ahead and just turn this into a regular trailer uh, with the option of still using it as a, a dolly to remove the engine uh, just by removing some of the deck boards. So anyway, this is the trailer that I made. You've got the mounts there and there that the, the bottle jacks go into. And then you've got one on that side and then one on the other side there by the other tire. Those actually go, the, the bottle jacks go on there and I've got six ton bottle jacks for each of them. Um, and they go under the jack points here on the back of the Scenic Cruiser. Uh, and actually here's the Scenic Cruiser. Again, there's my truck. Got all my tools in here. Um, I was out here last night, like I said, brought the trailer out. And then there's, there is also steel plate that I've got laid underneath the bus. Uh, and then also behind it, the steel plate will make it easier for me to roll the casters on. Uh, once the engine's out of the bus, I do still have to do a little bit more moving. Um, but the steel plate is just a, makes it a little bit nicer than the, the gravel uh, that the bus is actually parked in. Um, I will have to raise the back of the bus up still about three inches more, uh, three to four inches to get the, enough clearance um, for the dolly to go under. Uh, once I take off the axle, it drops down pretty low, but I still need just a little bit more clearance um, for the jacks that sit in the jack stands to go on. So I'm going to be working on taking off the axle um, and starting to remove uh, some of the things here in 858. And this is on the driver's side. Open this up. So here we've got the radiator. Um, we'll go ahead to pull the radiator out. There's a bolt that sits there. And then we have to also drop this. I'll go ahead and do that now. That just unclamps it from the bottom there. This bolt will pull out and this will pull towards me. Um, and then I'll be able to access uh, kind of the sockets on where there's uh, one of the sockets on where it actually mounts to the back of the bulkhead. Um, and then, uh, well, I'll start prepping things to get the engine out. So I just want to give you a, a quick tour kind of of the bus where it sits right now and uh, what I'm going to be doing to it. So I'll kind of go around here. There's the bus. Also need to open up this one. I'll get that once I got the camera down. Here's the inside of the bus. Currently I do have a uh, reflective shade there, uh, kind of pulled up. Uh, we are in neutral, not that's a big deal. The reason I'm pulling the engine out of the bus um, is because uh, the clutch has gone. So I need to actually replace the clutch. Uh, the best way to do that is just to remove the engine completely. So I'll be wor working on that. Um, but uh, I figured I'd give you a quick tour of the bus. I'm actually using, um, uh, it's a nice Canon HD camera. Uh, I have it, uh, I use it actually for work. Um, well, <laughs> haven't used it a whole lot, so I kind of wanted to bring it out here and test it out. I know I, I did a video walkthrough of the bus once before, and it's kind of hard to see some of the things. Here's the bathroom, still kind of dark. I don't have a light on the camera though. We'll go 
upstairs here. I've done some gutting too, and I'll, uh, I'll post up some videos here too, kind of on the work that I've done. It's not a whole lot, it's, it's just taking more time. I just need to devote some time to this, but first things first is to get it moving again under its own power, and then I'll worry about gutting it just a little bit more. Here's the back. Couch there, here's the shower. I started uh, kind of pulling off the shingling, uh, the cedar shingling that was the shower, it was gross. Um, and I kind of want to gut pretty much everything up on the second floor and start from the ground up. Kind of do my own design. I don't want to do it crappily. I actually want to take some time uh, and make sure I, I do it right. Um, I'd rather take the time to do it right than just get it done quick. I'm 24 and I figure, well, I was like, out of time right now, so I'll, I'll learn and I'll, I'll do things properly. Um, so you can kind of see the ceiling there has been ripped down. Uh, there are some leaks. All the sunroofs in the bus are cracked, which is kind of sad, but that'll be something I'll, I'll work on eventually later on as well. Um, ceiling was, was ripped down. It was starting to get some mold in it. Um, so it was better just to pull it down instead of having the bus smell like mold. Uh, we do have a, a stove here. Nothing's really hooked up though. There's a propane hookup there. And you also see for your sinks, the drain lines have been ran, um, but not not the lines for the hot and cold water and again there's there's nothing up here and this is just a nasty plywood countertop and this is going same thing with the dinette set plywood seats uh and in the middle of the table there's a couple of screws that actually poked through there there and there so the whole thing is just gonna go so i'll keep the stand the rest yeah you know, i'll probably just burn it um there was a cabinet here that's gone there was a tv there that's gone started taking some of the stuff apart um so that's about it i'll uh, i'll go ahead and, and walk back outside kind of show you what i've done a little bit out there i have blocked the bus up and i'll go ahead and show you that close the door for now so i have blocked the bus up i'll show you the blocks that i did make so this this uh, this is the way so I don't actually have to start up the bus and get all the engine all hot uh, before I go to remove it. But you can see there's not a whole lot of blocking on, on this axle, but it kind of just goes to the bump stop there. And I've got uh, some treated 2x4s uh, that I kind of put together, cut them, uh, and, and braced them in between the steel pieces there. We'll get a little bit closer there for that. So that's the blocking I did on that side. The rearmost axle is what I did the majority of the blocking on. So as you can see, some more treated 2x4s that I have in between the steel beams uh, right next to the airbags. Um, I, the bump stop on this one is pretty much gone. So I wanted to actually brace it uh, against the, the steel um, in between the airbags instead of the bump stop on this one. So again, this is where your batteries go. Kind of saw that in one of my other videos. The engine, I gotta unlock that and I'll start opening that up. Um, what I'm gonna do when I remove the engine, that side panel, the back, and the other side panel, uh, the side that my truck's backed up against, those will all come off. Um, the corner pieces there and there, those will also come off as well. There's three nuts. Um, one's hidden behind this one, there's one in the middle, and there's another one that the cradle actually hangs from the back of the bus on. Um, those will come off, um, but I won't, I won't undo the nuts until I've actually got the dolly rolled underneath the bus and it's got some weight on it because that will then alleviate the weight from the nuts so I can actually turn them and, and get them loose. So I'll, I'll do another kind of walk through that once I kind of put the camera down. Um, and that's it. Now I'll, I'll show you the blocks I put on this side as well. Rearmost axle, we'll start with that one first. Again, some treated wood there, and yes, that, that is a <laughs> a brick, um, but it, it, it does work. I just needed to hold it up. And then this one, same thing, the bump stop. That one's not the greatest job. Um, <laughs> when I did this, it was getting cold that evening, and I kind of just wanted it done. I don't recommend doing that. <laughs> I will probably redo that one. Um, but don't uh, don't criticize me too much for, for that. It has worked for holding the bus up. Um, at, his, at its stock aired up height, which is kind of nice. Um, the front's all the way down. But uh, all right, I'll get the, the camera set up here, uh, kind of as a, as a more 
uh, backup view. Hopefully the weather's not too bad. It's about 31 degrees outside on March 2nd. It's a little cold. I was here last night and it was about 28 and it kept dropping. Um, so I just did a little bit of work and then kind of left it be. I was hoping it would be a little bit warmer today. Um, I do definitely enjoy the sunlight. So get the camera set up and we'll go from there. All right, I've got the camera set up here. I'm just gonna record it as I go. I'll probably do um, do some cuts here kind of as I go just so it's not too boring. I may also do a time lapse as well just to kind of show you um, kind of what I'm going through. So um, it's a back and uh, enjoy.
All right, let me show you what I've done so far, just to kind of give you an idea. I don't work fast, it's more slow than anything. But I'll, uh, I'll go around and I'll show you what I did. All right, so the two corner panels, I pulled those off. Those are now sitting on the side of the bus. Um, right now, I've got the wiring for the trailer adapter, or the trailer wiring to pull off. It's a six pin. Um, <laughs> Looks like the guy welded it right on there. So I gotta see what I can do about this. I may have to cut it and uh, re-terminate it later. Um, but uh, this is the 8V71 Detroit Diesel on the back of the bus here. You got the radiator for it. The radiator on this side is actually for the air conditioning unit, which as you can see is not hooked up, but that is the original air conditioning unit. Kinda cool it's still in there. Um, I don't really have a use for it. Um, but anyway, it, this is all still the original, well, second original engine that's in here. Um, so the mounts up here, pulled that off, and I actually pulled the door off. Here are the corner panels, um, radiator for that. Here's your battery bay and your master power switch up there. This drawer actually pulls out, and you can put your batteries in there. And uh, there's the back door. A little bit of corrosion, as you can see. It's kind of hard to see from where the camera was before. Um, but nothing that's, well, it's not great, but it's not horrible either, I guess. It is a 57-year-old bus. So, that's that. I may not even get to pulling the engine today. Kind of more of just a prep day. Um, I'll try to come back out tomorrow to actually do more uh, with uh, get it prepped and getting it pulled. Uh, we just wanted to kind of bring the camera around and show you what I was working on. Here's actually all my tools and everything here in the back of my truck. Kind of a mess, uh, but I've got a power inverter uh, that my stereo is sitting on. Uh, it's a uh, 1500 watt running, uh, or no, excuse me, 2500 watt running, uh, 5000 watt peak power. So it's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> yes, those are jumper cables I'm using as the antenna for the radio. But anyway, um, the power inverter is connected to the bus batteries that I do have. Running the radio, they will last forever. Uh, when it starts to get dark out, I'll go ahead and do what I did yesterday and hook up some lights to it. So I've got some lights on top of the truck there, some extension cords, along with your big work lights. And that power inverter does awesome powering them. Um, I do have another battery just in case sitting back there. I got tools, ratchet straps, wood to go on top of the trailer to uh, kind of give a buffer between where the jacks are and then the, the metal frame. Um, I'll worry about that when I go to pull the engine. I'll also use the wood to set underneath the tires because I need to jack it up another three to four inches. Um, but it's coming along slowly but surely. Like I'm not in any rush. I'd rather just uh, work on it, get it done the correct way. Um, so here's my truck. Here's the bus. That's kind of what I'm what I'm working with here. The rest of the storage yard. So. There we go, I'll keep at it. Alright, so with pulling the engine out of this and with the, the dolly that I made, um, plans here, this is for the original dolly. Uh, real cool, uh, here's one side of it, the other side kind of gives you more of the dimensions of it. I got that upside down here for you. So I kind of took those dimensions uh, and started kind of working them on my own, but this gives you a, a great idea. Um, of kind of what the original dolly was. Uh, so this is actually one uh, that was redesigned. Um, so kind of cool. Um, they basically took an original one, measured it, and then put it in CAD um, uh, just so others could actually know the, the, the dimensions of it and everything. So that's fantastic. Um, 
So anyway, that that is the dolly. Let me set that back there. Sorry. So again, that is that is the dolly. Now in my Scenic Cruiser manual, that would be it right there. So, like I said, they they took and they measured the original one uh, when they when they drew up those CADs. I know the CADs are a little bit newer. Uh, the year on them that it was made um, was uh, 2003 uh, by Steve Bloomquest. You can kind of see it there uh, in the upper left hand corner. August 25th, 2003, and then his uh, company, Baja Services, I believe, if I read that right, is the one who kind of drew this all up. And it's a scenic cruiser dolly. So, but that is that one. Um, and he got a picture there of it coming out of the, the engine bay there on the scenic cruiser. Um, so power plant replacement, this is, this is what I'm going through. Let me actually flip this page over. Um, so this, this is what I'm going through. Uh, so what I'll, I will be doing now is starting to disconnect the lines. Um, you can kind of see there the instructions there. They do recommend draining the coolant system. Um, I'm actually not going to. You don't actually need to. Uh, well, hopefully I'll find out as we go through this. This is the first time I've done this. Uh, but some other things to do. Uh, I will have to disconnect the airlines, uh, the accelerator, the clutch controls, the shift linkage, um, all the, the gauges uh, that go up to the front of the bus. Um, there's your power steering fluid, there's your uh, water uh, shutoff valve for your heat uh, that goes up to the front. Um, in this manual it says four. I'm not 100% positive if there are four or if there are just two. I believe the manual that I have here uh, is actually from when they had the two four V71s in the Scenic Cruiser. Um, this is not the updated one once they got the eight V71, just the one engine. But I could be wrong. It could be uh, two, uh, so four lines total uh, for heat up in the cabin, uh, one for the front of the bus, the other for uh, the, the upper level, uh, kind of where the heating controls are. Uh, there are defrosters in the front and then uh, what gets pushed to the rest. So kind of gets you an idea of what that is. Here's the other page. Again, kind of, I do have the digital version of this too, uh, but just to give you that are watching an idea, uh, so kind of what is required. Um, all the battery lines, I gotta disconnect the, the generator, um, the, the power lines from that. There's, so there's a lot to do. Uh, and then you actually have, once you pull it, uh, go ahead and inspect it and everything. Make sure there's no cracks in the cradle. Most scenic cruisers are going to have some sort of cracks, so uh, just be mindful of that. Um, I guess just uh, <laughs> do your best repairing it. If I have cracks, I actually may have a professional work on mine. I've been welding, but I don't know if I feel comfortable with this and I don't actually even have a welder powerful enough to do this um, All I have is a is a 110 uh, volt welder So it's definitely not capable of fixing any cracks or or adding um, Additional plate to brace the cradle and then uh, you get your installation procedure Which is basically the reverse of your removal um, But again just to give you an idea. I don't know if you can read that uh, if you change it to 1080p on, on YouTube You should be able to to kind of go through and see what's in here. Um, so I'll go, I'll walk you through here what uh, what I'm gonna do. I need to get some weight here set on this so I don't have pages that blow all over. So radiator here, like I said, that pulls out. There's, there's, uh, there's the sockets there in there. Okay, so here's the side of the, the Detroit diesel. Kind of cool. This is General Motors diesel on there. Big metal radiator fan. Uh, now there are some that have actually switched out this fan. Um, they've made a mount that will actually custom mount to there and they've changed it to a plastic fan that still has the fins that have their that have their design but I believe the fan is actually a part off of, um, off of some semi trucks but it's plastic Excuse me. So it's a, uh, it's a lot light, li lot less, uh, less weight. So it's a lot easier to move around. Um, and I do have the shroud on my radiator. Um, so we've got a socket there that's got to get pulled off. Um, you've got the exhaust, and obviously I do have a lot I got to work on. I got some holes in there, as you can see. Um, there's another socket then on the other side of the engine. But kind of looking through there, you can see the transmission going through the bulkhead there. Um, You've got your battery box up over there, your intake. I do also have to remove the intake from there uh, with the big, the big pipe up there. Um, so I got my work cut out for me yet. I'm gonna come around here. 
This also is where you would add oil to it. Uh, there's your, uh, your, your check for it, which is kind of cool. Um, lower radiator hose. So, a couple of lines you've got your, on mine anyway, some buses may be a little different, but there's your, one of your, your water lines, and that goes through the bumper, and that actually goes up right there. And there is a shutoff valve that's right there that I'll use to go ahead and turn that off. Um, and I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe once I shut that off, um, well actually that might be a hard line all the way through, but I basically have to disconnect this. This will stay attached to the engine and the cradle, uh, and the rest should be able to get pulled away. So that's one of the things, and I kind of got to look around to see what else I need to do. Um, I think there's a second one, it's right here. So that one actually goes into there, goes up, and that then starts going towards the front of the bus. Um, you kind of see it through there. So I'll kind of figure it out as I, as I look and figure out what I need to disconnect. I'll grab the camera and I'll show, uh, show everybody. I'm kind of doing this for myself just to kind of document everything, but also to help out others that do have scenic cruisers. Um, just to, to give them some insight if they've never done this before. This is my first time. Um, figured I'd try it. Like I said, I'm just taking my time, making sure I do everything properly, document everything, uh, just so when I go to put it back together, I've actually got evidence and I can look back on, well, I remember if this went there, well, I got the video. So, anyway, hope you enjoy. Cold. Did I mention it's like 31 degrees out? 32, it was supposed to be the high of today. I don't even know if I ever got there, but it's it's cold today. It says 30 right now. It's it's cold. All right, so a couple things to show as I'm going through here. We'll go on the this side of the radiator. Okay, so here we're in the engine compartment. You got an air valve here, and that connects to this. I believe this this flexible hose right there. I believe that is the the hose for the air compressor. So I believe that can get taken off. Um, ooh. That actually doesn't look good. Uh, it looks like the hose underneath is still fine, but I'll have to check that. So um, I'm not sure if that gets pulled off there or if that gets pulled off over at that end down there. Um, but I'll, I'll figure that out. Um, I believe, don't quote me, but I believe some of the wiring here for our gauges is this right here. So I gotta figure out how to take that off. I have no idea what this wire is. <laughs> there's there's a lot of not so good things here so with me buying the bus and I've owned it for about a year now um, I want to make sure that I do things correct when I go to put things back together um, and not just kind of hack them back together just to get it done this cable here this one I believe this is our throttle cable you can kind of see it goes through and that actually connects I believe inside to the intake. So that I believe would be the throttle. Um, I think that just gets taken off with that pin there and that's good to go. Um, some other things, I'm not sure if any of these lines here need to get disconnected. I'd assume this one would. Um, like I said, I'm unsure of what that actually goes to at the moment. Um, it kind of goes around, it looks kind of, again, I'm unsure. So. I, gotta, I still got to do some more checking. Uh, we've got some other gauges down there. Um, there's our oil filter, by the way, right there. 
So I'm looking, I'm trying to figure it out. It's starting to get cold, the wind's picking up. Um, I may not be out here for too much longer. Um, just, <laughs> it's cold. Go around to the front here. Sure, let's see. I believe there's two lines that are kind of down in there that will have to get taken off as well. Um, that one and that one. Um, unsure what they go to, so I'll have to check that out. A couple more things here, and then I think I might be packing it up. This beautiful sunset, by the way, pretty cool. All right, so back of the bus here, we'll go to uh, this side. So I believe, let me actually go put the camera here. That would be our starter right there. So you got the big battery cable there. Um, uh, starter solenoid, I guess, would be right there. So I got to disconnect that big cable. That actually comes over, mounts on the wall. Well, I can't get a good angle over there. Um, so that gets disconnected, and then I got to disconnect that cable as well uh, from there um, to also pull the bus. One of the other things I have to do is go underneath the bus. Um, I'm not gonna take this camera under there with me, but I need to jack up the bus a little bit more. Um, and then I've got all my linkage there for the transmission. Let me actually bring that to the other side as well. I'll show you that. That you can see without me going under. Okay, so here's our linkage for the transmission. Let me actually go on the side there. So that rod that runs up to the top, that is for the clutch. Um, you've got your adjustment nut there at the bottom. Um, that, you turn the nut down. So as your clutch wears out, you turn it down. And you, as you can see, mine's pretty much at the bottom. Um, and then you have those two levers are for your two, or excuse me, are for your four gears. Um, and that then goes all the way up to the front of the bus where the shifter is. So that will come out and then I believe up here that would be the generator. Uh, not an alternator, that would be the generator. So I got to disconnect the lines off of that as well uh, to pull that. So I've got my work cut out for me. Um, not entirely sure how to pull the, line, pull the, the linkage there from the clutch. Oh yes, and I also have to do the drive shaft. So that would be the drive shaft right there. Um, I may just pull out the engine straight and just let the the, the slip come out. Um, mark it first, obviously. I've also contemplated um, go ahead and just undoing the bolts there on the drive shaft that connect it to the transmission. So that's that. sitting between the sleeper axle here there's the one tire and you've got another bulkhead there between the tires and there's the front one so that is the rear axle which is the innermost 
rear of the axles to the most inside of the bus. There's the drive shaft, and there's where it connects in. So here is the slip yoke, or excuse me, not the slip, just the kind of where it slides in. So kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see there it slides right in. So that should slide off, so I shouldn't actually have to take it off, um, but I could. So I could actually remove those bolts all around the edge to actually get it off. So in this video is on my cell phone. I'll go ahead and put this together with the other one. Here's the uh, linkage for the shifters. There's your clutch linkage. Um, got the sun setting there, which is kind of cool. And I can actually, I'm looking into the engine bay. So here's off the side. Um, but I am here <laughs> under under the bus. What I'm going to do is actually have jack set up. There's one there, and there's one actually behind me here. Right there. But I'm actually going to go ahead and put underneath the tires here just to give me a little bit more leverage. So that's what I'm going to do. So I am jacking up the tires. I think you can I'm see that as well. A little scary. Under the bus. The position I'm in should be okay. In the case that the, uh, the bus would drop back down. Or jack fail. Uh, I really hope that doesn't happen. I know my battery or my memory is going to be So, you can kind of see I've gotten the bus up that high already. Um, we're at almost an inch. That side. That one as well. Sorry for the camera angle. That side as well. Same there. And there. There's that. We'll keep going. Alright, so I got the bus jacked up. I know the battery's almost dead. But right here, you can kind of see, it's kind of cool. So there we go. I'm going to see about getting some 2x4s under there. Well, I know I can get at that one. I don't think this one. At least not yet. Um, just so I got that. We'll go to the other side here. Yep, a lot higher. That's awesome. That is awesome. Here's that one. Definitely have some clearance there. In there. So that'll make the dolly able to roll under. Plenty of clearance.
All right, I'm at the bus again. It's uh, Sunday evening on March 3rd. Um, didn't get a whole lot of time to do it during the day today. Just had other things that came up. Um, but at the bus again, there's a tarp sitting there. I'm going to go ahead and put that to cover the back of the bus. We're supposed to get some snow tomorrow. Um, so just kind of to protect that again since I moved the back. Um, <laughs> ignore the incessant beeping. That would be my, uh, my power inverter. Um, just It's got a lot of load on with the... Uh, with the work lights uh, and I got a couple lights under the bus too so anyway um, I'll just let this go kind of a time lapse of what I've been doing before and uh, sit back and enjoy hopefully something exciting happens That's it for tonight.